Welcome back for some more Nora's arc and some more lessons on theme. What the author is trying to teach us about real life. Remember, theme is about that, not about what the character actually does. We use what the character does to come up with a life lesson. So, how about you? Did you think that would happen with the horse? I thought something different was going to happen. But, no. Okay, we are still working on our graphic organizer trifold. And the reason they call it a trifold is that we're at school, they would fold it back front to back into three parts. Tri means three, like a tricycle has three wheels. A trifold would be folded three times, three different sections. Okay, anyways, we are starting picking back up on page 90. Okay, 490 actually. And we are gonna look at our trifold, make some uh, predictions, look at our questions, because that always helps us be thinking while we're reading. And here we go. Okay. Who are all the people in grandma's new house? What effect did the river rising have? What result did the river rising have? We've got one supporting detail, the Craigs had lost everything, but they were glad to be alive. Another supporting detail, and then we need to come up with the theme with these two details, all right? So first question, who are the people in grandma's new house and what effect did the river rising have? What was the result of the river rising? Here we go. There are so many people in that house, different animals. I see cats, chickens, pigs. Oh, no, thank you. A cow. <laughs> Whoop, look at that. Who's sitting on my head? Get off of there. Okay. Who, who are all the people in the house? By nightfall, the house was full to bursting. Besides Mrs. LaFleur and Madeline, Mr. and Mrs. Guth Mr. and Mrs. Guthrie, the Fergusons and the Craig family had moved in. 23 people in all. There were also three horses, a cow, five pigs, a duck, four cats, and 100 chickens. So who were they? Were they all neighbors? Pretty much, they were all neighbors, right? Um, we don't have to write all their names. Who are all the people in grandma's new house? They were the neighbors. They needed a place to go. All right, our next question, what effect, what result did the river rising have? Oh no, that illustration has given me a good clue, huh? The river rose until the house became an island and we watched our neighbor's houses wash down the river. Oh, that's sad. So what was the result of the river rising? The house is washed away. The neighbor's houses washed away. What do you think it means when the, when the author says that house became an island? So an island is a landmass that is surrounded completely by water. It's not connected, like Florida is not an island. Hawaii is an island because there's water all around it. So that's what the author means when their house was an island. It was just them and there was water all around them. Scary. All right, so now the next two pages, we're gonna come up with a detail and the theme. We did come up with the theme at the beginning, but I'm glad we're coming up with another one now. Okay. Do they look sad though? What does it look like they're doing? Do you think they're all shouting? To me, it looks like they are singing to try to keep their spirits up probably. Mr. and Mrs. Guthrie had bought, brought a side of salt pork with them, though we had no way to cook it. The Fergusons had saved their radio 
a skillet, that's a pan, a bag of dried apples and a three-legged cat. Mm. They were delighted to find Major alive and well in our kitchen. The Craigs had lost everything but the clothes on their back. We're just glad we all got out alive, Mrs. Craig said, which only reminded grandma and me that grandpa had still not returned. We had bread and dried apples for supper and rainwater, Madeline and I scooped out of the Lafour's rowboat. The water had a few fish scales in it, but no one complained. Why did no one complain? That was all they had, right? There's no sense in complaining if you don't have anything else. You just have to appreciate with what you have. That could be a theme. Let's look here. It said the Craigs had lost everything, but they were glad to be alive. The Craigs had lost everything but the clothes on their back. We're just glad we got out alive. What about here? The water, another detail is the water had um, fish scales in it. Had a few fish scales in it. And I kind of gave away the theme without having you think about it. Be happy with what you have, right? They lost all their clothes. The water had some fish scales. Be happy with what you have. There's always going to be somebody who has more than you, and there's always going to be somebody who has less than you. So you need to be happy with what you have, okay? So the details are within the text. The theme is what we learn from the details, okay? So be happy. Like I said, there's always somebody who has more, and there will always be someone who has less than you. So appreciate what you have. Be happy with what you have. Got it? Life lesson. With no stove or beds, we all huddled together for warmth, sharing grandma's quilts as best we could. We sang Scottish songs, they were singing, and row, row, row your boat in a round. And Mrs. LaFleur taught us a la Claire Fontaine, a tune that brought tears to our eyes even though we couldn't understand the words. Mrs. Guthrie told her, told how her grandfather had fought at Gettysburg. That's a war. So that's another reason why it's historical fiction. And Mr. Craig kept us laughing with stories of his boyhood days in a logging camp in Maine. If it hadn't been for the thought of grandpa out there somewhere, it would have almost seemed like a party. So they, instead of pouting and getting upset and crying for something they can't change because they couldn't change what happened, they're trying to cheer each other up and keep their spirits positive because they couldn't change the flood. They couldn't change their houses but you can change your attitude. They could change their attitude. So that could be another theme. Have a positive attitude, even when things are difficult, all right? Because if you have a bad attitude, it doesn't change what's happening. It's like I tell Bennett and Viviana with their homework. You gotta do it anyway, so you may as well do it with a smile. It makes it worse if you do it all pouty and mad about it, okay? So that's another great life lesson here. This is a fabulous story. Learning all kinds of things here. Your job right now is to go off and finish it up. You've got column four, your complete column four, answer the questions. You're gonna complete column five and answer the questions. Your discussion post today will be from column five. So you have to read and do column four before you can get to column five, okay? Why is grandpa crying? Yeah. Grandpa is crying because who is Nora? Discussion post, Nora is blah, 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 blah. Discussion post, what is the theme of the story? The theme is blah, 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 blah. So we came up with a couple of different themes throughout the story with what we've read, but try to put them all together and see if you can come up with one big theme. And then author's purpose, why do you think the author wrote this? To persuade us, to teach us, or to entertain us? You don't have to answer that unless you want to. To persuade means to talk. Did he talk you into doing something? Did he teach you anything new? Or did you destroy this? 
So complete box four, discussion post for box five, one, two, and three. All right, so hopefully you got a lot of good theme out of this story. We already did. And I'm really glad we're reading this story because we're learning a lot of life lessons. And tomorrow you will have some independent work. So get to it. Yeah.